welcome to This Dementia Life. It's our monthly podcast created by Dementia Action Alliance. I'm your host, Chuck McClatchy, and I live my dementia life with Alzheimer's disease. During these podcasts, we will have conversations with expiring people living with dementia and the people who care about us. My guest today is John Wood, who is an incredible artist. And John, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself, and then we can talk about your art. Sure. Um, I'm, I just turned 50. Well, not just, but last year I turned 50, and I retired from being a teacher about f uh, four and a half years ago because of my memory issues. And um, so I was 45 or 46 when I found out I had to retire. And um, so it was a hard transition to switch my lifestyle. But um, I feel that uh, I found a way to accept where I am. And I love the fact that I can see my family more as long as they're willing, you know. And um, I do make a lot of art and I've exhibited, uh, you know, mostly in the United States, but uh, I've worked with some groups in uh, the UK to have some shows there too. So, but um, that's kind of my background. I've mostly, I lived in Michigan my whole life. Um, that's me, I guess. I have a wife okay. and an eight-year-old son. I see some of your, your art. It's, it's incredible. What, what do you use for inspiration? That's an interesting question because um, for a lot of my sculpture work, I make sculpture about things that, um, that make me uncomfortable, um, like social issues and things like that. And what I found is that uh, while I was making this artwork, it's a big downer. Like there's a lot of bad things going on, you know? So um, I started just, um, I, I kind of like looked at another direction and, and looked for joy. So, um, so there's really three different ways that I do my artwork. Um, I look at society and make reflect on that. That's my way of dealing with it. And um, I, I, uh, I make uh, things about dementia to help me cope with the things I'm going through. Most of the drawings I've exhibited lately are related to um, how I uh, um, communicate with other people. And I made a series of cards to help me communicate with other people. Um, I don't know if I can find them on the spot here, but, uh, I think the, the project I'm working on now is um, we visited my son's new school and it's a Steiner school or a Waldorf school, either name is correct. And um, the teachers are really amazing. They're really amazing in how much they love the kids and, and engage everyone through uh, the way they teach. And it was amazing. And I wrote a poem about them like while I was sitting there. And I'm making a sculpture about that now. So, so that, that really inspired me. It's people like that, that, um, that I find inspiring. That's the most fun to work on, so. When was the first time that you realized that you had this, this gift of, of art? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's, uh, um, I just always love to watch things and make things. So I think a lot of it is a gift from God to allow me to look at things the way I do. And, um, my wife's a professional musician and we talk a lot about, um, you have to do your scales in music to get better. And it's that way with art. Talent will take you and, and God-given ability will take you pretty far. But to really make it work, you gotta, you've got to do the work yourself. So, so ever, my whole life, that's all I know is I've loved to make art and I love looking at art. I love stories. And um, I don't know. So forever, I guess. I always knew. 
Um, which do you prefer, the, the sculpturing or the painting? Well, it just depends on the project. Um, I was talking with some, a friend of mine who specializes in making book art. And I didn't know book art was a discipline, but the story and the content is the shape of the book. Um, so she's really hard to define what she does. So we were talking about how in our studies, like in grad school and everything, everyone wants to make us be one thing. You're supposed to focus and be only John the sculptor or John the painter. And once you leave that environment, it's hard to shake that, um, that definition. And, and really, I just want to be an artist. So it just depends on the project. Um, Sometimes I use clay, sometimes I'm learning to sew now um, for some projects with the machine. I've always done hand sewing, but a friend of ours is teaching us how to sew. So I don't know, I don't really have a preference. I, I think the thing I love the most is drawing because it, it helps me, uh, like every, anytime I'm somewhere, I'll have my sketchbook and drawing what I see um, helps me remember the place that I was and it's I feel like the things I draw pick me I don't really pick them it's like they glow and then they they say John draw me like that so I love engaging with things and people and ideas in that way so I, th I think out of all of it it's the drawing because it's so accessible so how has uh your dementia uh, affected your, your art? Um, well, it's, it's a, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> My projects used to take um, three or four weeks to make before I started really having issues. And now they'll take nine months to a year. And I'm not sure if it's because of my memory issues or if it's because I'm retired now and I have more time to focus on it. I do have a lot of urgency for my work, but it's, I don't have a lot of peak hours in the day to work on it. So like, for example, I don't do woodworking at night. Like if it's close to sundown, forget it. Cause I don't want to lose any fingers and that's, you know, I have to be smart. So my opportunities to, to um, craft things have a limited window in the day. And I also need to have usually someone with me. Um, so that, you know, that can be tricky. Um, I, I, I've, I found that by making art, especially about my dementia, I made a series of artworks about um, aphasia I have some speech issues and memory issues with words. And um, so I, I made some artworks about that experience and I found that uh, it opened up for some people and we were able to learn about each other more and how to understand each other. But in another way, some people are scared by it. So, you know, you don't always know who's gonna react in what way and that's okay. I, you know, I'm not offended when people are frightened or whatever. I wish they weren't frightened, but I just think it's more important for me to be transparent about what I'm going through and, and be willing to just talk about it and share what's happening. Because my behavior and my artwork can be misinterpreted. You know, if people see me scowling, they won't know that um, I'm confused, don't know where I am or whatever, unless I tell them. They just, I just look mad or whatever sometimes. And I don't want that. Um, that's part of why I made the cards that I made that I hand to people. I have one on my desk here. So this one, this one says pause and I'll, I'll send you the files. On. This one says pause. And what I do is when people start to talk too fast or I, I'm, I can't understand what they're saying anymore, I'll say to them, I have a dementia diagnosis, and if you read this card, we might understand each other better. So then they have to stop, and it opens up like a little comic book. 
and they have to read the inside and it says, you know, sometimes I take extra time to talk or explain things. Can you please ask me when I'm done? So I'm trying to be polite, but I, I really, I really love my friends and family and I want to communicate well with them. Um, so that's really, you know, my, my dementia diagnosis has really, and my artwork has changed because I, I see the value in it more. I see the value in wanting to um, strengthen my relationships with my family and friends and, and uh, in that way. But it's not easy. I, it's not, it's, a, it's like uh, trying to convince people sometimes that we all have to nudge our behavior a little to change so we can get along and communicate better. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great idea about the cards. Um, I've got a business card now that has some, kind of that same information on it. And it's funny because sometimes you give that to somebody and it's like there's a shock. They don't, they have no idea. Right. And by the time they read it, you know, you're doing a great service to open people's minds about dementia that a look on our face does not represent what's going on in our minds. Right. right. And I, I run through the same issues that, that you have. Um, when you do the, the, the artwork and it's, it's dementia related, does it seem like you have a little bit more feelings towards those pieces? Um, I, I think when I finish an artwork, no matter what the, the content is, there's a, there's a huge investment of time and thought and reflection and, and the physical act of making it in it. So I, I don't know. I don't know if there's if it's more or less for dementia. Um, I, I was thinking about I was thinking about some sculptures I've been making that are not specifically inspired by a dementia issue. But what I realized was the sculptures are all about relationships, and that's the I think that's the big nut that I'm trying to crack is under I want to understand people, and I want hopefully for people to understand me. So in a way, even though the topic, the topic's actually um, about Adam and Eve and um, a folk story from the Hebrew tradition about a, someone named Lilith and how Lilith and Adam didn't get along and then there was Eve and all this stuff. So um, I was thinking about how anytime a negative influence can project itself into a relationship there's some there's something that has to be solved in there there's something that has to be solved so that's what i've you know that's what i've been thinking about it's funny how our lives just become one big thing you know and um i want people to know um what i'm going through and how things are with me but I struggle with being identified as a as a dementia artist because I've been an artist I've been exhibiting since the 80s way before my diagnosis so I still want to be John Wood the artist <laughs> you know what I mean um, not that there's anything negative about being known as the dementia artist but I just want to have fun and and do what I do and you know it's funny um, so my son is eight now, and when he was in preschool, we started making marionette puppets just for fun. Like he liked these little characters from his comic books and stuff, Sonic the Hedgehog. So we made some string puppets. And then the more I thought about making these string puppets, I made another one, then we made some more together. We ended up making a stage that goes in our, like we had to take everything out of our dining room to make a puppet stage. And what I found was that um, and when we perform and we do this as a family, we're all, we're all interacting together and it really is our, um, entertainment center of our house is being able to like sing a song together and 
do a puppet dance. And um, it, I never would have envisioned this being a thing in my life ever really. But behind me is one of my puppets. This is JJ Funny. And he has three different heads that pop out. I don't know if you can see it. And uh, he does a dance and everything. And um, it's just joyful. It's just joyful to perform with him. And um, we've had gigs already. And, you know, I, I, we did, a, we did a, uh, our first show at a fair, a winter fair. And we made a Christmas tree, like a, like a prop Christmas tree and a fairy puppet that my son would do this dance with the fairy puppet and cast a spell on this Christmas tree while my wife and her duet partner sang O Tannenbaum. So it was just, it was just beautiful. And, you know, after the, I, I got home that day and I just felt like that was the most proud of anything I've ever made were those puppets and doing that show with them because to do something beautiful that was, um, really well received and people just loved seeing the whole thing and, and enjoyed it. It just meant so much to me to be able to participate in something like that, to be a participant in something that's beautiful with my family. is just amazing. I can't think of anything. I don't know. I think about like groups of families that do, that have done music like the staple singers, like how lucky were they to be able to perform together? So th so puppetry is a thing that I'm that we're doing and it's a blast and uh, the sculpture I'm still doing. I have a big show coming up at a uh, college in Michigan in, this year in October. Um, and that, that show is going to focus on my work that's about, um, I make a lot of artwork inspired by poems. And, and again, um, part of it is that I've always loved poetry. And the other part is I struggle to remember words, so to me they're really valuable. So I, I want to read I want to read the most delicious poem that I can. You know, I don't want to read the yeah you know, I love the New York Times like it says on my shirt, but I don't want to just read the news. I want to see the best of what words can do. So I'm lucky to know poets and read poets and you know, and it, it's crazy because uh, it's crazy, Chuck. That I read a book by an author who lives in Missouri. And in the back of the book, they had a website for the publisher. And I sent her an email and I was like, hey, I really like your poem. Do you want to collaborate on a sculpture? And knowing how artists are, she's like, sure. So um, that's the Adam and Eve sculpture I was telling you about. It it's, has her writing emblazoned on the figures. And it's actually in her handwriting. So we worked out this whole thing that I can share with you another time, possibly, because it's a long process. But my point is that meeting other artists and writers um, is really, uh, it's a gift to be able to do that. And it's fun and engaging. And I think that's, that's what I look towards with my art. But being a visual artist, you don't always get those opportunities we're more or less expected to like go and be quiet and sit in a room and, you know, hammer away on some marble, you know, but I really want to interact with people and that means a lot to me. I like being, I like doing stuff on my own too, but I, you know. Well, that's great. I, I want you to know that how I see you is a beautiful artist that has dementia. And I think, you know, by, people seeing this, they will see what, how talented you are and how long you've been talented. Um, and when you can turn it into a family affair with everybody enjoying the art, I think that's, that's a special quality and not everybody has that. You're, 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 you're fortunate to have, you know, the conditions where um, you, you can involve your family in it. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really thankful, and um, I hope I'm able to express to my family and friends that collaborate with me how much I really love doing these things with them, and uh, I think they know. But I, I, I agree with you. I really am fortunate and blessed in so many ways to have um, family and friends around me that that you know 
care and are fun and want to do things. The, the puppet stage that we made, um, I had just sketched out an idea of a stage after we had seen a show in New Jersey. We were visiting friends in New Jersey about a year ago and we saw a puppet play. And the, I met the puppeteer afterwards. He said, come on backstage, see how we set up. And so I looked at everything and I, ooh, this is what we're gonna make. So I, was, I made some drawings of how I wanted to put it together. And I was out to breakfast with a friend of mine and he goes, you need a hand with that? And this is my good friend, Joe Reed. And he says, uh, do you need a hand, you know, putting this together? It looks pretty, like it's gonna be pretty big. I go, sure. He goes, how about I bring some tools? I'm like, okay. And I didn't realize Joe was a contractor. <laughs> so he came over and we didn't make it the John, um, you know, art way where it's half right. We made it the Joe Reed way where it was plumb and square and beautiful and it's sturdy. And I could have never done that on my own, you know, but I'm really blessed to have people around me like Joe to be willing to spend time with me to do that. It was great. It came out great and it's a beautiful stage. And uh, yeah, so I think, you know, and thinking about how artwork affects other people, um, participating in the exhibit that we had at the DAA conference a couple years ago is a really great way to show people that there's so many people um, wanting to, to share what's going on it, 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 that exhibit is just a beautiful way to um, take a step past the, the fear and, and put that aside that people have about the word dementia, that it's not what people think. And I've been lucky to participate with uh, uh, David Reed's group in, in uh, the United Kingdom, the South Yorkshire Dementia Creative Arts uh, Festival, which is, again, um, it's about being inclusive and showing people through the exhibit that, that we're still here and we're still the people you've always known and our lives have a lot of beauty in it still. And, I, you know, it's really important to me to participate in those things because I learned so much from seeing the other artists work and, and reflecting on how they've created what they've made and, um, it just really strengthens me to participate in shows like that and to be a part of it. I do have a question for you. How would you encourage others to get involved who may have never have tried it? Um, well, I would, I would say uh, visit your local um, art supply store first because I know most of the art supply stores around here have some connection with people that teach. And I think if people are just starting out, find a place to go and take a class. Because um, in, a, in a class situation, the, the teachers can break things down and make them accessible. And uh, I still take classes. I'm going to a class this Saturday on uh, a, a figure drawing class that a friend of mine is having. And um, are you a Star Trek fan? Do you like Star Trek? Okay, so the model is going to be dressed as a Klingon. So we're going to we're going to draw a Klingon as part of our uh, as part of our drawing class. So I so whether you're a beginner or maybe you have some experience, I would say find those find activities where you can share your process with people because um, I feel like I'm just starting to understand how to make my work. And I have to learn, I have to learn more. I really, I need to study more and, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So that's what I would say. Visit, start with a store, like an independent art supply store. Look around, see what interests you as far as materials. And then ask the people, do you know anyone that has classes around here? Because I'm sure they provide the materials for the classes. They'll hook you up. Okay, the last thing, question. Um, what would you tell individuals that may see this that have dementia that may be af afraid to pursue uh, you know the the talent that they have because of you know how it is when you're diagnosed with this your your life goes real dark for a while yeah and what would you 
what would be your message to those people to get back out into the light and and continue their passion? Well, I think it's tough to, the fear is just so, it's so consuming. Um, it really is hard to overcome that. I know I've struggled with that. Um, I think, uh, I think it's important for people to know that um, you need to enjoy your life and and follow that passion and um it's like when you go dancing there's a reason it's dark right cuz we all look silly just enjoy it just let it all hang out and and enjoy it and um you know things are different now with for people with dementia their your life will be different but and some things will be harder but you're still there you're still there so seek your joy follow that joy and know that your family loves you god's given you this for a reason that you know we don't know the answer but you you can you it'll be okay it'll be okay and um search out ways that you can be involved and learn new things and by learning new things you're excited about something um that gets you out of, um, you know, my, my biggest problem is I think about myself too much. You know, I want to think about other things and, and be engaged and excited. So um, get out of the house or wherever you stay, meet new people. And if there aren't new people to meet, make, make something up, make a chess club, whatever it is you like. Start invite, call people up and invite them over or have whoever's, you know, however it works. So that's my advice. Just know that you're still loved. It doesn't change who you are. You're still a beautiful person and follow your joy. Follow your joy with other people. And, and you'll, you know, the people in your life, they do love you. And, you know, it, it is difficult. There's some friends when I've got my diagnosis, I haven't talked to them since. They're, they're afraid of it. And I'm not mad at them or anything, but I miss them. I miss them, but I, I can't convince someone to be another way and I'm not going to keep trying. I've got to do what's right for me. And, you know, that's hard too. You got to let go of things and, and move on, follow the joy. John, I have to admit, it's been an honor talking with you and your, your um, art and stuff and the little guy sitting over your, sitting, in fact, sitting on your shoulder. Right. It, that's great. Thank you so much for sure. being on the show. I, I greatly appreciate it, and you're an incredible artist, and thank you for, you know, being out there, showing people that you're not a, an art, you're not a person, you know, with dementia that has art, that you're an artist with dementia. So thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate your, your thoughtful questions, and I really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you much. Okay. I'd like to thank you for joining us today on This Dementia Life. You can view other podcasts on our website, daanow.org, and click podcast. I'm your host, Chuck McClatchy. Remember, the brain may forget, but the heart remembers. See you next time.